for a story to reach the most powerful level of, of uh, compulsion or effectiveness, you really need a clean-cut storyline. You really need a good guy and a bad guy at the end of it. That's why the Rwandan story has worked so well, because it has been told that way. And you don't really need to understand anything more beyond that. You understand that there was a good guy and there was a bad guy and something really horrible happened. And then at the end of that really horrible thing, something really great happens. The victims win and there's this redemption and rebuilding and re supposedly reconciliation. This is a story that could move anyone virtually to tears. Tears of sadness in the first half of the story, tears of joy in the second half of the story. We should all be suspicious of stories with lines that clean because in the real world there are very few stories that have lines that clean. But the story of the Congo which gets to your question, is a story that doesn't seem to have any lines at all. You have to really take some time to invest your, you know, your attention in understanding this very complicated tangle of situations in a really big country with conflict dispersed and interlaced at many levels between localities and regions and lots of different forces and all of these players, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're not really terribly interested in Africa to begin with, it's very unlikely that you're going to commit the, the kind of focus that's required to come to grips with this. It's, it's almost impossible. It's not impossible to understand it. It's impossible to understand it if you don't commit that kind of focus. Therefore, uh, people just conclude it's just another one of these African messes it's Africans killing Africans. At the end of the day, it's not going to make a, a blip of difference in the history of mankind, and so you turn the page. That's how it works.